Okay. Well, happy Tuesday, everyone. And we would like to welcome you to week three of Baking with Ancient Grains. Um, last week was supposed to be week three, but I was um, definitely... Why have you been in since week day. Oh, I glanced in through the door. Um, um, Caitlin was up in balmy um, Moreland and... Um, However, she didn't have the recipe, so we postponed for a week, and um, we will just continue to do our five weeks. Um, we'll just go a week into April. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Caitlin Youngquist. She's the Extension Educator in Washakie County, and she's involved in the research aspect of all the ancient grains. So... I will turn it over to her and she's going to talk a little bit about the nutritional value of the different grains. Well, thank you. I just wanted to share and remind folks who maybe or folks who weren't here um, last week or a couple weeks ago what we are talking about when we're talking about ancient grains or these um, early wheat varieties for sort of the earliest domesticated wheat varieties. We are talking about einkorn. Um, which you can see there on your screen, that was the earliest domesticated wheat that we have record of, probably eight to 12,000 years ago. And that was followed up by emmer, with a little bit of outcrossing, maybe with some wild grass and some further domestication. Emmer was the next grain that was domesticated along the line towards wheat, and then followed by spelt. And spelt has, um, has the same number of chromosomes as wheat and has had a fair amount of effort um, put into it for plant breeding and, and developing further varieties. And it's the most similar to our modern wheats of all of these early, um, early wheat varieties. And there's some forage spelts and there's some um, spelt grown still for baking around the country and using in different products. Um, but the einkorn was really the earliest and in some ways the most challenging to bake with if you're used to using modern wheat, uh, followed by emmer and followed by spelt. And what's another interesting thing about these um, crops or these wheats is that they, they are called uh, hold grains. When wheat comes out of the field, comes out of the combine, it's, it's a naked grain already. It doesn't have a hole on it. But when spelt, emmer, and einkorn come out of the combine or after being harvested, they are still in the hole. And spelt actually has two grain, two seed heads in the, in the hole, as does emmer, and then einkorn just has a single one. So this requires an extra step of processing that needs to happen after harvest and before we can use it for food and milling it into flour. So that just is an interesting thing about these grains that's a little bit different and why in some way times they may be more costly to purchase. And the other thing is some of you may have heard that um, folks who are sensitive to gluten or sensitive to wheat or can't digest wheat can digest some of these ancient grains. Um, and in some cases that may be true. They are not gluten-free grains. And that's really important to distinguish. The einkorn and the emmer and the spelt all contain gluten, although the gluten is weaker in some ways than our modern wheat, which is what makes them a little more challenging to bake with. But what research has shown is that some of these, um, that spelt, for example, is higher in the omega-9. Um, it's higher in a lot of the irons um, and a lot of the minerals like iron, zinc, copper, magnesium, and um, it has a much lower phytic acid. And for those of you who maybe are familiar with um, the, the, if you've sprouted some grains or done a little bit of your research on why people sprout or soak grains, part of that is to um, release the phytase or help break down that phytic acid. And so having a lower phytic acid in your grains can help make the minerals more available for digestion. The other thing that's really interesting is flour made with this einkorn has almost a yellow color to it. And that's because it's very high in beta carotene, um, vitamin A, uh, that grain is extremely high compared to our other wheat varieties. And then they also tend to be higher in protein uh, although, again, it's not the same baking quality protein that we're used to um, dealing with with our modern wheats. And the other one that I think is interesting, there has been some research that sh has shown that when looking at these more ancient or older varieties, earlier varieties of wheat, there is, a, there is less inflammatory response in the body when people eat these grains as opposed to a modern wheat variety. And so there's not only higher mineral content, um, higher omegas, uh, there's also um, evidence of higher 
maintenance of satiety, keeping you feel, feeling full and changes the glucose and the insulin response and fewer um, and less of an inflammatory response in people who have non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So that's just a little bit of information to share um, on what some of the research has shown. Of course, the internet is full of all sorts of interesting and, and strange bits of information, but we've been working really hard to find the, the research that and very factual information to share with you about these grains. So that's a little, little bit about what we know, and I will turn it back over to our lovely chef to show us how to make um, our, our, our uh, pretzels for today. Okay, thanks, Caitlin. Um, Caitlin definitely knows a lot more about um, all of these grains than I do. I'm the baking end of the deal, and we've learned a lot just experimenting what little we have done. And, and it is fun. The kids really enjoy doing it. We've been doing a lot of these with our 4-H members and they love the grinding of the wheat and look and the emmer and spelt and comparing how different even they look ground up. So, so today we are going to make some soft pretzels using emmer and emmer is, um, kind of the middle of the ground that Caitlin was talking about. It's a little more difficult to bake with. Um, it doesn't rise as well as like spelt and wheat flour do. So it's really good for like um, products that don't need to rise a lot like flatbreads, um, these pretzels, it works really well because you don't want them to rise a lot. And so we've done it in breads and it rises up, but then it doesn't have the elasticity to hold that rise up. So it kind of collapses again. So today we've done the pretzels before with Emma and they've turned out really well. So with that, we're going to start as always um, food safety, make sure your hands are washed, the counters are washed because you are going to be working with this dough with your hands. So. We're gonna start out with a cup and a half of warm water. And we want the water to between, be between 110 and 115 degrees. And this is just at 110 degrees and it's right out of the tap here. So we're right on. Um, we are going to use just regular rice yeast in these and it calls for one package of yeast, but we can buy it in the bulk. So that equals about two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. So we're gonna measure that and dissolve that in our warm water. Um, for those of you who don't know, yeast is a living plant. And so that's what, um, it, it grows. And the water will activate the yeast. And as we put in the other ingredients, um, the sugar is, is the food for the yeast so that it will um, rise properly. But without some control, which is the salt you put in, the yeast will just keep growing and growing and growing and then it gets so weak that it collapses. So we will dissolve this good. We'll put in a little sugar um, for food for the yeast to grow. And then we're going to put in some salt, um, not only for flavor, but um, to control how much our yeast is going to um, expand today. So we store our yeast um, in the freezer, or you can store it in the refrigerator. It just makes it last much longer if it's kept cold. And we don't use it every day, so we keep it in there and then it stays fresh for when we do use it. Okay, all our yeast is good and dissolved. We're going to add one tablespoon of sugar and just plain old table sugar. One teaspoon of salt. Okay. 
and we'll stir that up really good. So today we're making our pretzels out of um, half amber flour and half all-purpose white flour. I have not, in all the times we've made them with the amber and spelt and whole wheat, I've never gone 100% of any of the whole grains. Um, I like them a little better, um, half, half and half. So, so today we're gonna to use two cups of all-purpose flour. And again, you wanna just spoon this flour into your cup um, lightly. You don't want it packed into your cup. And then just use a knife to level that off. And we'll do another cup. This last week we um, made a recipe with the kids. We made some tortillas and, and did an experiment. We made one batch with um, white flour, one batch with um, half whole wheat, half white, one batch with emmer, half and half, and one batch with spelt. Um, they did turn out differently, each batch. And um, the one, but it's always interesting when you're working with the kids, you're not sure if they turned out differently because um, of what, they should have turned out like, or if the kids kind of mismeasured, um, the Emma group way mismeasured their oil, so we had to start over completely. And then they mis um, decided to put in a half a cup of oil rather than a third of a cup. So our Emma tortillas were a little oily, still great flavor, but um, did not look near as nice as the other two, yeah, but I think that was uh, operator error, not the flour error. Okay, there's our flour. Now we're just gonna stir this in and um, till it's smooth. These are really fun for kids to make if you have kids at home or just even us adults like to make them and eat them. They're really good dipped in like cheese, um, marinara sauce, ranch dressing. So that they're really a good snack to have, um, very healthy with the whole wheat or whole grains in them. And at this point, I usually just continue mixing them with my hands. So, because we're gonna have to knead them. So just make sure that you get all your flour worked in while you have your dough in the bowl. Pretty well gets all our flour in. And the next step is you are going to need them for six to eight minutes. So I'll just demonstrate quickly kneading and, and then we'll go ahead and we won't need for six to eight minutes and I'll demonstrate how to get them shaped. So when you're kneading, just put a little flour, not much, on your um, counter or um, cutting board, whatever you're working on. And with the heel of your hand, which is right here from your thumb to the other side of your hand, just press down, turn your dough, fold it over, and you wanna do this till your dough is very smooth and elastic. So you may need to keep adding just a little flour, but you don't wanna to add too much that it will dry out your dough and your pretzels will be really dry. 
And you can tell if it starts sticking to your counter a little, just add just a little bit more flour. We've been making these pretzels at our house for probably, let's see, Erin is 36 years old and this was her um, second 4-H demonstration that she did. And so she would have been nine. And so we've been making these, the year she did her demonstration, we made so many pretzels that, but. So again, we probably needed about two minutes now. So about another four minutes and it will get much smoother looking. And so at that point, you just take off about two tablespoons into your hand. And I like to just roll them in my hands like this. And you wanna get them into a rope shape or, and long, or you can roll them on the counter, whatever easiest. And if you can make all sorts of shapes, you can make traditional pretzel shapes, you can make circles. Um, some kids like to make their initials or you can make them in the shape of animals or whatever, but just a traditional pretzel shape. And um, this will make about 18 pretzels and um, you bake them at 425 for 15 minutes or until they're golden brown. Right before you put them in the oven, you would grease your cookie sheet, put them on there. Um, you would break an egg. We'll go ahead and do that. Um, beat the egg slightly. And then you're going to dab a little egg onto the top of your pretzel. This will add um, a, a very little amount of protein, but it will give your pretzel a nice pretty glaze. And it's also going to hold your salt on. So today we're going to use um, just a little bit of coarse kosher salt. You could also do your pretzels with a cinnamon sugar mixture if you like the sweet variety better. The, the coarse salt just gives a, a prettier appearance. And then you would bake those for your um, 10 to 15 minutes or until they're golden brown. So with that, I after we sign off, I'll continue to knead the bread and go ahead and make the pretzels and we can post a picture of them done um, when they're done baking. The one thing I did bring, I know um, Caitlin brought, um, show pictures of what they look like while they're still on the stock. This is the actual Emmer kernels and they are a lot darker than wheat kernels and they're a little different shaped. They're um, a little longer and some of them are a little fatter, but they're definitely longer and just darker in color. So when you grind the, the wheat, the emmer, it is definitely a browner flour than whole wheat or the spelt flour is. So anyway, with that, um, next week, we will um, be doing a no need um, bread that will be a yeast bread that's a really quick and easy kind of rustic bread to serve with like soups and stews, that kind of thing. And then the last week, we'll be making some scones. So we hope you're enjoying learning how to bake with. Um, with the ancient grains because we're sure learning a lot as we share with you. So, and here is the pretzel. Um, it was kind of hiding um, out of camera view. Oh. So kind of the traditional just pretzel knot. Um, and you can see the little bit of egg wash and salt. And if you do have questions during the week, you can either contact me um, via um, Facebook. And if you have more of the growing questions, 
um, send those to me too, and we will be sure to get those on to Caitlin and she will answer those for you. So until next week, have a great week and we'll see you next Tuesday.